Hello and welcome to another little photo editing video in which I'm going to show you how I'm about to fix this image. First of all, what's there to fix? There are a few things. I have the camera pretty high to be able to get in some middle ground, so some sense of the water flow here. And for that reason, the foreground occupies a lot of space in this image, too much for my taste. The bigger problem though is up here. You see the top of this waterfall, it's very close to the edge of the frame. And the reason I shot it that narrow is there was just open sky up here, so I couldn't include much more greenery. But still, I like this image and I think I can redeem it via some selective image transformations. So that's a technique I showed in the past and I'm now gonna use it to fix this image. So let me show you how to do that. First, I duplicate this layer here and gonna make a selection for the foreground. So this is where I'm gonna start first shrinking down the foreground a bit, or well, not just a bit, actually quite a bit. Control D, deselects, and then I make another selection just for this very lower part of the image and shrink this down even more. This also makes the flow of water in the foreground a bit more dynamic. So emphasizing the diagonals. So let's just now move this down to the lower edge. You see the before and after. So I shrink down that part. Now I have a lot of space up here and what I can now do, I make a selection which starts just at the top of the waterfall. So maybe just like that here. And now I zoom in, control T and stretch it. But I'll not stretch it like this because this would destroy the pixels. So I can just go a little bit. So maybe factor 1.5, something like that is usually okay. So let's see how much can I go. Let's zoom in a bit and see when the pixels start to stretch too much so that it's visible. So the before and after, I don't think you would have noticed if I had not shown you what I just did. Another thing I want to do now is to stretch the whole upper part here, the waterfall, to make it look a little bit bigger, a little higher. Just stretch it a bit. Control D to deselect. And now see the before and the after. And also if we go to 100%, you still see the pixels still look good. I didn't do too much selective transformations up here. Already a bit of trouble. So I went too far, you see this, and this is something you need to be careful with. So let's undo the last stretch. So I think here it's still okay, but we shouldn't go too much. So instead of stretching the whole upper part of the image, what I'm gonna do, this is also something you can do, I just stretch the middle part. I make a selection of this upper part, which I want to preserve, which I don't want to stretch anymore. With the move tool, I move it up a bit. So basically creating a gap here for the middle ground. Control D, deselects. Now I make a selection here, just for this middle waterfall here. I press Ctrl T. Now I zoom in and I now close the gap by just pulling this up. To be very careful. Just like that. I zoom out, I apply transformation, Ctrl D, deselect. And now we can look at the before and after. So I made quite some changes to the image. Now another thing to continue those selective transformations. I first will do Ctrl Alt Shift E, create a merge copy. What also bothers me with this image is this side here. So I want to stretch this out a bit. So let's just do that. Make a selection just here for the right side of the frame. Control T again, and I stretch this out a bit. I'll later also crop in a bit. So I'll leave it like that. And talking about cropping, yeah, let's just do that. I'll just crop in the photo now. So we lose the top part. Also, let's see from the bottom have to crop in a bit more, just like that. And I think this is now a pretty good starting material for further photo editing. So see the before and the after. So it's actually not that big of a change to the scene itself, but the photo, in my opinion, benefited from those transformations because I didn't lose much detail. So it's still a detailed photo. And also be aware that I didn't sharpen it yet. So there's no pre-sharpening applied. So this will bring this photo even more detail. And now I also have a bit more space at the top here, which I think is needed. Otherwise the waterfall was just too close to the edge of the frame. So before, after, 
And yeah, now I continue with my typical editing. So I hope you liked this video. Again, a technique you can use to fix your photos, but also a technique with which you have to be careful. So don't go too far because otherwise the pixels will be stretched too much and you'll lose details and sharpness. At some point also the proportions will be visibly distorted. So just a little bit here, a little bit there, and then you can achieve very realistic and convincing results. So see you in the next video. Bye.